Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at a new tablet from Chewy. This is the Chewy VI10 Plus, and this is uh, running with an Intel Cherry Trail Z8300 processor. You see a Windows icon on here, but this is not running Windows. It is running Remix OS, which is uh, basically a reimagining, a fork, if you will, of the Android operating system. This one is running with Android 5.0 Lollipop, but uh, what Remix OS does is it makes all of your Android apps behave like a Windows app, and you can resize the Windows. I have multitasking going on with windowed uh, versions of your favorite apps running, and you can run some in full screen if you wish to. Uh, so you kind of get the best of both Android as well as a uh, windowed operating system, and this really works quite well, and we've uh, looked at Remix in other videos. We'll be diving uh, deeper into what this tablet can do in just a second, but I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from GearBest.com. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is is posted and we'll likely uh, put this one on our uh, giveaway list in the coming weeks here. So let's take a look at the hardware and then we'll get into uh, how all of this performs. It's kind of funny, it has the Windows button on there, but this is actually uh, controlling things in Remix OS versus uh, a Windows device. Uh, this one has two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. 10.8 inch IPS display, so really nice viewing angles on it. 1080p also, it really looks nice at all angles. I was very impressed with the screen for the price. This tablet as you see it uh, right now in GearBest is about $130, so very inexpensive, uh, but performs quite well and looks nice too. Uh, pretty large bezels on it as you can see. It reminds me a lot of the original iPad, both in its uh, size and weight. Uh, so this one comes in around a pound and a half, 1.54 pounds, uh, that's about 700 grams. So uh, a little on the heavier side for a tablet these days, but uh, this does have really decent battery life. I could see you easily getting eight hours of use out of it. I've been uh, using, I charged it up once before I started playing with it and I'm still at 50% power and I've really been uh, whacking away at it over the last two days or so. So really decent battery life on this one. And as for ports, it has a pretty basic layout of ports on here. So you've got your headphone jack over there. I believe that's also a microphone port. Uh, over here is your HDMI output. So you've got a micro HDMI for plugging in external displays. You have a USB port here. This is USB OTG, so you can plug things into that. Uh, there's a USB Type-C connector right there. This is mostly used for charging. It'll charge via USB Type-C. Uh, the adapter that I got in the box did not have the right plug for the United States. It is one of those switching power adapters, so you might need to get an adapter for that uh, when you bring it in, but I found uh, just any standard USB Type-C charging cable should work with it, so no problems charging it there. Uh, you've got a micro SD card slot over here, which will go up to 128 gigabytes, so you can augment some of its onboard storage. And there are two speaker grills on this, but only one speaker. So you've got uh, what looks like a speaker on this side and here on the other side. The sound, though, only comes out of here, so I suspect uh, this is probably for its internal microphone. The sound quality isn't bad, but it's not great, so it's pro probably fine for just you know watching a YouTube video or something like that, but if you want better audio quality, definitely plug in the headphones. Uh, there are two megapixel cameras, two of them, one on the back and one on the front. Not great, but uh, passable, I guess, for doing a web conference or uh, something along those lines, so you have that. On the bottom, there are some pogo plugs because there is a companion keyboard available for this uh, for about an additional $27 or so on GearBest's website. Site. They did not include that with uh, our review unit here, but I am going to use this Logitech KA30 keyboard I bought about a year ago. Every time I have this in a video, people are always asking about it, so I just like to talk about it. I have a full review of it posted down below in the video description. Really nice integrated trackpad. It's Bluetooth, but it also works with Logitech's uh, USB dongle. Today we're going to be using it via Bluetooth with the device here. This supports Bluetooth, of course, and it also supports uh, Wi-Fi, of course, but it's only 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, so a little slower, just wire wireless N and not wireless AC. So now that the hardware is out of the way, let's get into how it works and we'll see how Remix OS uh, does with all the things we typically look at on a tablet. Let's have a look. All right, let's take a look at some web browsing first. We'll load up Google Chrome. Now remember, this is the Android version of Google Chrome. This is not uh, some other operating system we're in here. So you're seeing an Android device, but uh, these windows are resizable. So let me go and just look at a few web pages here so you can get a feel for how all of this works here. We'll scroll down through the page a little bit. I did find that scrolling with your finger uh, works better than using the uh, trackpad combo, at least the one that I have. So it's a little uh, jumpy on the scrolling with a uh, external trackpad, but I think using the touch screen probably is the uh, way to work out the best here. So we'll just tap on an article here. You can see how fast everything renders 
comes in. Uh, the Intel processor on here does make a difference because you do have a lot of horsepower, at least comparatively, uh, at your disposal compared to other uh, Android devices that we typically look at. So good rendering speeds, uh, decent browsing performance, even though we don't have wireless AC built into this device. And on the Octane benchmark test, we get a score of 6,451, which puts it pretty much where a lot of other Z8300 Atom-based devices have ended up running with different operating systems. So a lot of times we're looking at Chrome OS or Windows. Uh, this performs very well and, com and comparable to those uh, other operating systems. And I was quite impressed to see that. So there really isn't much of an overhead uh, having this Remix OS on board. They very much optimized things over the last couple of months since I last really uh, took a close look at it. But I will say, uh, having used this now for a couple days on a tablet, uh, that Remix is really best with a trackpad and uh, keyboard. And the reason is, as you can see just how tiny these, win these little buttons are to resize the windows. So you can easily uh, hit the wrong one here. So you really need, a, I think, a trackpad to make this experience worthwhile. There isn't much of a uh, lean back interface that would uh, allow you to do more with a uh, finger versus a mouse pointer. And I can, of course, resize the windows with my finger, but it's often hard to get uh, the right point to make it work. So I really think the keyboard and trackpad combo is going to work the best. But what's cool about this is that uh, we've got here an Android version of Chrome running windowed. I can load up maybe uh, Microsoft Excel here, which is also an Android app, uh, and that will run windowed also when it boots up here. So you really have uh, all of your Android apps available to you because Google Play is on this device and you can have resizable windows and jump back and forth between your Android apps uh, much like you would on a uh, Windows or Chrome OS device here. And you even get a taskbar at the bottom to show you what uh, is currently running in the background. Now, I did notice that some of my Android apps would not allow me to resize the window and I found there was a way to uh, get them resizable once again. So if you go over to the start menu here and go into the settings option, uh, within the applications menu there is an option buried <laughs> almost too deep in my opinion, uh, to turn on or off full screen mode. So right now Amazon here will be resizable, but if I switch this option to on, it will only run in full screen. So I think they must have looked at some apps that were misbehaving on Remix OS and as a safety measure, uh, just forced them to full screen. I found that Firefox and Chrome were both apps that did not allow me initially to resize the windows, but after I turned that option on, I was all set. I also loaded up Kodi on here to see how well it performed on some higher end video formats. So here we are streaming a Blu-ray MKV file. I found that the streaming performance of these really high end videos are a little iffy. So I probably will not be recommending this as a, a high end Kodi playback device. Smaller files that are compressed more heavily uh, should work just fine like YouTube. But I'm finding that while the videos play back fine on YouTube, you're not going to get 60 frames per second playback. It looks like it's defaulting to 30, uh, but it is very smooth at uh, 1080p at the full resolution here. So I think for Netflix and for uh, all of the, maybe even some Plex videos that are compressing down a little bit, uh, you should be fine. But higher end stuff is not going to perform as well on here as it might on a Windows-based device. And gaming on the device is also pretty good. We've got the Android version of Goat Simulator running right now. So most of your Google Play app should work as well as things you might find for free on the Amazon Underground Store. So I'm pretty pleased with the gaming performance on this. Not all games on Android are compatible with Intel processors. So you may want to check uh, compatibility, but I think for the most part, uh, most of the casual games should work just fine on it. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot test, which we've been running on some of our mid to high end Android and iOS devices lately, we get a score of 1,163. So it's not going to be top of the class, but it will certainly uh, be able to hold its own. And it certainly does better than an entry level smartphone might. So decent little gaming platform that seems to perform uh, decently enough for the types of games that you would play on a tablet at this price point. So that is the Chewy VI 10 Plus. And for 130 bucks, I think this is a very good value. It runs exceptionally well with the Remix OS. They've really uh, fine-tuned Remix over the last couple of months, and it really feels nice now. And I really like the way it works on this Intel hardware too. Very responsive, very snappy, and very well optimized for this type of hardware. Windows certainly runs on the same chip, but I don't think it runs as well when you really start getting into a bunch of different applications uh, as Android might, which is better uh, paired up with mobile processors like this one. So this is, again, Android in a desktop kind of environment. Although, again, I think it's better suited with a, a trackpad and keyboard attached to it. So you may want to go with that $27 add-on to get you that uh, when you're out on the road. When you're home, you can plug it into your monitor and a, a USB keyboard and mouse or do a Bluetooth thing like I'm doing here and uh, use it as a desktop too. So it really does well. Uh, but again, more a laptop feel than a tablet feel uh, with Remix on there. But it really does function quite nicely and definitely worth considering. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. 
If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.